For this video, we're going to talk about continuity on a closed interval. So before we talked about continuous at a single point, now we're going to broaden that point to an interval, so from a small value to a bigger value. A function is considered continuous if on that closed interval it is continuous from the endpoints, endpoint to endpoint. If the limit approaching the left point from the right, so if we're approaching our endpoint of A from the right side, our limit should equal the function value at that point. And the same thing for the other side. If we're approaching our right endpoint from the left, it should equal the function value at the at point B. I think this might be it might seem a little simple and straightforward. That's just because it is. This is going to open the door to the intermediate value theorem which I'll explain in two seconds. Okay, the intermediate value theorem says that if we have a continuous function from A to B and if we have a function value of Y sub 0 that is in between the two function values A and B that means this value of Y sub 0 is equal to the function value of, y, of the function value at C. This is going to make it theoretically possible to have zeros and roots to a function. And for those of you who forgot, zeros and roots are where graphs will cross the x-axis. This is going to be specifically helpful when we start talking about derivatives and minimum and maximums. But for now, we're just going to be talking about making sure that they actually do exist. All right, so we just talked about the intermediate value theorem and con continuity on a closed interval. So here we are being asked to show that the equation x cubed minus 15x plus 1 equals 0 has three solutions on the interval from negative 4 to 4. So remember, solutions mean that it crosses the x-axis. So if you cross the x-axis, your function value is going to go from uh, negative values for the function. So all these values down here are all negative and eventually once they cross the x-axis they're going to turn to positive. So the way you go about doing this is to evaluate these numbers on this interval and see if they go from negative to positive or positive to negative. If that happens that means they cross the x-axis and we have a solution in the interval. So I'm going to find the function values of each one of these guys. And I'm not going to be too specific, I'm just going to determine if they're positive or negative. Okay, so for the first one, negative 4, negative 4 cubed is negative 64 plus 60 plus 1. I believe that to be negative. F of negative 3 is negative 27 plus 45, I think that's positive. So if we keep evaluating the function at these interval points, we'll see that they're either positive or negative, and then we can determine if there's a solution or not. Alright, now after evaluating everything, we'll see that there is a change from positive, negative to positive here. And it's positive, 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 positive. And then they change again here. Negative, 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 and then it change again here. So here we have three times where it changed from negative to positive or positive to negative, implying that the function crossed the x axis. So there's one, two, three solutions.